In today's journey, we give a few tips on how to upgrade your brew pie and give a little insight on what it's like to work with maker technology in the brewing world. First and foremost, however, if you're looking for a quick and easy solution to controlling temperatures, just get an Inkbird. They have several models out there that can handle a lot of advanced features, such as heating and cooling at the same time, Wi-Fi, and even a six-stage programmable one. And we are unaware of any of them that cost more than $60. So there really is little incentive unless making everything yourself is part of your hobby. Or if you need something that you can customize for your own needs. Such as our need to be able to have a modular system that is easy to scale up and down with whatever project we're currently working on. Incidentally, our current project is producing a shield that allows us to swap out any parts that we think may be malfunctioning, along with improving the overall stability of the design. Here you can see the prototype on the right, which is not doing well. It does have the 4.7K ohm resistor built in, a hot swappable port for plugging our relay board into, and a 3.5 headphone jack for plugging the DS18B20 thermal probes. But these duct tape solutions will no longer work as we need to upgrade to genuine parts and quick cutting corners. So our first upgrade is to use a shield that was designed for the R3 Arduinos. Aside from it having life quality improvements such as more solder pads, we now also have the ability to use the nylon screws to physically mount the two boards together, ensuring that they do not come apart unintentionally like the prototype does. Which may have been why some of our thermoprobes shorted out already, that or it was just because they were cheap clones anyways. Another place that we upgraded was the relay board. Although this one may not be a terrible one, it just wasn't as reliable as we would have liked it to be. Although how we wired it up is something that stayed, as that's hard to improve upon. We have been big fans of this relay we got from Adafruit. It may be more expensive than what we got off of Amazon, but this one does come with the backing of Lady Ada herself. It's too bad that the feathers aren't compatible with the BrewPie Remix install, otherwise this would make for a real tidy package. Unfortunately, they use different USB to serial converters. And here's our last upgrade we did by switching out the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack for 4.8 millimeter spade crimp terminal connectors. As we were worried that some of our thermal probes were getting shorted out by the way we had the jack wired originally. And although these may seem like a downgrade, what's great about them is that they are very versatile into what we can plug into the shield on a moment's notice. Visibly so, as Phil is about to cycle through a lot of the different options that we have to plug in. Such as converting back to a 3.5 audio jack, a Euro style terminal block that can have anything plugged into it, such as these three 3.5 audio jacks, or just directly installing it into a long thermal probe, such as the one seen here. Which is handy because if you don't build them yourself, the color coding may not be as accurate from brand to brand. The spade terminals make sure that we can rewire into any direction we need at a moment's notice. Ours came with insulating sleeves so we don't have to worry about them shorting out if they rub up against each other. Normally BrewPie is so simple you don't need much training or experience, but in this case I recommend knowing how to use a multimeter and a soldering iron if you wish to complete any upgrades to your own system. This has to do with this no longer being basic, but moving on to more advanced maker techniques. As you can see, that even the smallest task starts to require quite a bit of extra tools and material just to complete it in a safe and meaningful way. As if you don't complete this in a proper way, you can fry your whole system or burn down your house, and that's your liability, not ours. We will give you a few safety tips though. Always make sure you're using food grade materials that will come in contact with anything. Be sure to think everything through, like not putting the 5 volt rail on the wrong spot of a headphone jack. That's why we switched to the spade connectors. Any electronics or integrated circuits should be shipped to you in anti-static bags from a reputable source that you can trust that isn't going to supply you with counterfeit parts. Remember, if a price is too good to be true, it probably is. And finally, it's probably worthless to watch Phil open this bag as the component inside is way too small to see. The legendary DS18B20 thermal probe. And the only way to know for sure that that's what you have in your socket is if you put it there yourself. But as you can see through our endless ramblings today that we've went from this crazy prototype that manages to work one way or another 
just not always reliable because of loose connections, into the finished product that we have here. Not only is it better looking, but it's also far more reliable and robust. Which when buying an industrial grade anything is what you're really paying for, reliability. And because these things are going to control almost everything in our lab, we require the same from them. Another thing we require is being able to switch out any parts at a moment notice. As Phil can be seen here, taking one of our empty project boxes, installing the first circuit board, and then uninstalling it to replace it with another one. This all happens in about a minute. And yeah, he forgot the thermocouples, but that's okay because this speed test was completely impromptu and not staged at all. Honestly, I'd never intentionally lie to you.